The Untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, I was just, you know, I watch a lot of random fights in boxing when, when I have my downtime, and I love watching fights that nobody's talked about. I, I like going through a fighter's career and then looking for fights that I've never heard anybody talk about and then watching those fights because every now and then you will learn something about the fighter's career, the fighter's style, and things like that, you know? So um, I was just watching Josh Taylor's, was it seventh? Seventh professional fight. I just got done watching his seventh professional fight against Dave Ryan in 2016. Now this is a fight that I was recommended to watch by somebody. And um, it's a fight that I, never, I had never watched before. Ironically enough, the, the fight that I actually wound up watching Josh Taylor for the first time was his eighth professional fight against um, a fighter by the name of Alfonso Oliveira, who, and they fought on the Carl Frampton Leo Santa Cruz undercard in 2017. So that was my introduction to Josh Taylor, was his next fight, the eighth fight. But the seventh fight, let me tell you something about that seventh fight from Josh, Josh Taylor against Dave Ryan. It is a modern day boxing masterpiece. I mean, a boxing masterpiece. From distance control to aggression to switch hitting. And yes, he actually boxed Southpaw and Orthodox in this fight to counter punch. I mean, he just showed so much at such an early stage of his career that you couldn't help but you couldn't help but think that Josh Taylor was gonna be a special, special fighter. Now, to give you guys some context on the fight, if you've never seen it, you know, the Dave Ryan fight was Josh Taylor's seventh professional fight. At that stage of his career, he had never gone past two rounds at any, in any of his previous six professional fights. He'd only boxed like nine rounds before he stepped in the ring to box Dave Ryan in, the, in, in that fight. So didn't have a whole ton of experience because he was flattening everything in his path uh, early in his career. And Dave Ryan really, really represented that first opportunity as an opponent, as a guy that could give him rounds. You know, Dave Ryan wasn't a world-class fighter but domestically across you know Europe and you know England, he had established established himself as a as a solid high level guy. Um, his his most notable win came against uh, Paul McCloskey, who you guys may remember. remember he made some waves. Uh, my, uh, um, you know he fought Amir Khan and Demarcus Coley and guys like that. I think he fought Paulie Malignaggi. So he 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 was a fringe world level guy at one point and. You know, Dave Ryan had beaten him. Uh, Dave Ryan had two fights with a fighter by the name of John Wayne Hibbert. He won the first one. He lost the second one in which uh, he retired in the 10th round due to a back injury. But he had actually dropped uh, John Wayne Hibbert in the sixth round of that fight. So this is a guy that was very experienced, very rugged. A guy that, you know, was, 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 was a big test for Josh Taylor at that stage of his career. And let me tell you guys, um, when you watch this fight, if you get, I, I would highly recommend you watch this fight because it really is um, a boxing masterpiece. It was one of those fights where when you watch that Josh Taylor in 2016, in his seventh professional fight, you get an idea of, of what was to come, how special he was because he was operating as a as a 30 fight veteran, a 40 fight veteran, a you know, 10 year pro. You know, he was fighting with that kind of poise and that kind of. Um, you know, understanding of what was going on in the ring. Dave Ryan, you know, not a big puncher, but if you allow him to get close to you, very physically strong. And there were times where Josh Taylor allowed Dave Ryan to get close to him and he beat him physically, which was not no small accomplishment. You know, um, there was one there was one moment in, in particular in this fight where I remember it was literally the last punch thrown in the fourth round. Uh, Dave Ryan's trying to close the gap on Josh Taylor and make it a physical fight. And... He throws this right hand. He throws a straight right hand, right? So he throws a straight right hand. Josh Taylor, he slips the, he slips the right hand to going to his left. So he slips the right hand going to his left. Now, speaking as somebody who's a southpaw myself, I know when you when you slip when you when you slip a punch, your natural inclination is to either A, reset, or B, shoot the straight left hand to the head. You know, that, that's just what southpaws do. If you if a guy throws a jab or a straight right hand, Particularly with a straight right hand, you want to slip to the outside and then come back with the left hand. Now, Taylor does, does something that's very difficult to do. He slips he slips the straight right hand, and then on top of that, he shoots not to the head, but he shoots right to the body, right to the liver area, and uh, he lands it perfectly flush. And uh, he gets a big grimace out of Dave Ryan. The bell rings, and um, 
you know, that surprised me that punch didn't put him down. And then uh, he wound up, he, he ultimately wound up stopping Dave Ryan in the fifth round with a series of body shots. But just everything was so great about this fight from the way he was parrying punches to the jabs, to the counter punching, to the combination punching, just a lot of things Josh Taylor was doing great to the switch hitting, to the ways he was showing different looks. And it's really one of those fights where he showed, it's kind of crazy because in that fight against Dave Ryan, I feel like he's shown his entire skill set. He showed things in that fight that he's never really had to show at the world level because he's beaten guys just with his with his with his C game and his B game. But you know, he made sure as as one of his first big fights in Scotland, he brought his A game that night. And you know, when you watch that fight and you see the overall skills of a Josh Taylor and what he brings to the ring, you I think you'd be crazy not to not think he could beat a Terrence Crawford or any anybody. You know, he's really got those kind of skills. Um, it was interesting, you know. So he won. He wins the fight. Um, he wins. You know, the the Commonwealth title. You know, Dave Ryan, by the way, extra tidbit about Dave Ryan. Dave Ryan had already been Commonwealth champion and WBC international champ champion. So he wasn't, you know, he seven, he was 17 and nine. He retired with a record. He retired in his boxing career with a record of 17 and 10, but he was, he was better than his record indicated, you know, a solid domestic level fighter. Um, and definitely a good test for a guy like Josh Taylor, who, who at that time only had seven fights and nine, only nine rounds boxed going into the fight. But what I found interesting about this fight, um, Aside from the fight was a post fight interview where, uh, you know, Carl Frampton was doing commentary. You know, at the time, Josh was being trained by Shane McGuigan, who he's no longer with. But, you know, Carl Frampton was with Shane McGuigan. So, he, he, you know, they were they were gym. They were gym mates. You know, they, they, they were guys that spent time in the gym together, training together. And um, mind you, this is 2016. This is the peak of Carl Frampton's powers. You know, he had just defeated Leo Santa Cruz. He had just defeated Scott Quigg. He was many people's pick for fighter of the year at that particular time, right? So there was never a better version of Carl Frampton than the 2016 Carl Frampton. And um, you hear him just speak so glowingly of Josh Taylor. And he talked about how, you know, he, it wasn't so much that Josh Taylor was learning things from him in the gym, but that he was learning things from Josh Taylor. And um, just the way he spoke about him, you could tell uh, he was going to be special. And, you know, this fight right here, man, I I'll tell you this, I've watched... A lot of Josh Taylor fights. So, somehow I never watched this one, but I've watched a lot of his fights. I've watched the Alfonso Oliveira fight to the O'Hara Davies fight. You know, and the list goes on and on and on. There, you know, he doesn't have many fights, so it's not hard to watch all of his fights in his career. But this one right here, you know, I think was a boxing masterpiece. I mean, if Josh Taylor was an artist, an artist on a canvas, he was he was he was Picasso in this fight because that's how beautiful this fight was. From everything he did, from every punch he picked, to every step he took, to every defensive movement he made, to every counter punch he threw, everything was perfect. It was a punch perfect performance, and um, it's probably one that I'm gonna go back and watch quite a few times. I'll be honest, with you. it's one of those fights that I'm gonna go back and probably watch three, four, five, six times. And I'll probably with the way Josh Taylor fights and with the amount of things that he does in the ring, there's probably something new that I'll take every time I watch this fight. So look, I'm only making this video because I, I literally just got done watching this fight like ten minutes ago. And I wanted to share why excitement with you guys and, and, and hopefully you could encourage people to go watch it themselves. And if you go watch the video, if you, if, if you go watch that fight, come back here. Let me know what you think, man, because um, the Dave Ryan, Josh Taylor fight is a modern day boxing Picasso masterpiece. And, you know, it's one of the, it's one of those fights that shows you the overall skill set, like everything Josh Taylor brings to the table. And it's also the kind of fight that um, you look at you look at that fight and you look at what he's been able to, been able to accomplish since then against better opponents and, you know, it, it, it doesn't look as crazy to say that Josh Taylor could be the best fighter in the world. So I'm going to leave it at that. This, this, this was just a good excuse to talk about Josh Taylor. I love Josh Taylor. I think he's a, on a great pace in his career. You know, he, 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 you know, if he keeps going the way he's going, he can mess around and be the best fighter to ever come out of the UK um, and Scotland as well. So, you know, you guys let me know what you think in the comments down below. Make sure you take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take it guys.